Hello comrades, today I will talk about uh, why I did this <laughs> and um, yeah, of some of the things uh, we have learned together because helpful comments on my section um, we have found out one or two new things which is great and um, how to beat the former cosmonaut now realistic mode. So let's stay tuned. First thing first, uh, let me set up the radio station. So I have uh, invited three blocks of housing to work there and I have set up the propaganda to 100%. You see I have um, a rating of 40% and 2% uh, propaganda gain. We at the moment are around 37% of propaganda. And uh, during the episode we will see if we see anything or I will make a time jump. Let's see. So, yes, see, 60% uh, rating. Rating is uh, put together of how many people are working here and how much is the loyalty or um, productivity of your people. So the higher the loyalty and productivity is, the higher your rating gets, the better you can educate your people. This is why I also have set up here the bar to 30%. At, at the moment I cannot filter anything. And uh, we have people with a radio for uh, 980 relation. Ah, we have uh, 980 could here and we have a population of 70%. 70% have a radio. So, Okay, and uh, you see how many are listening. So it's uh, over around 100 listeners which is fairly bad because you see how many people we are using here to uh, make high quality propaganda radio which is quite a lot um, 150 people times 3 is 400, 450 people just to uh, educate 100 people at a time um, radio scales with the republic so the bigger your republic is the less, less people you need uh, percentage wise to make the radio happen now it's a little bit crazy because um, our republic is small. I would usually go with um, a second city, uh, work with the passive loyalty. 37% is enough of loyalty. Do not get mad. Uh, we have a productivity of 90%. Let's see. Pick some random dude. Um, or do that. We have a productivity of uh, lifespan 92%. This is uh, because they are fairly happy. Yeah, nearly 90% happiness and uh, plus the loyalty it's 37% so let's keep this number in mind and see if we can change it or how it will change over time okay so now let's get to the subject why <laughs> why 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 um, I started this because um, I was a little bit annoyed about some big streamer who also started this one was one of the first who started uh, the, the former cosmonaut now realistic mode um, challenge and proclaimed it was the perfect season and uh, failed in many different ways which is fine because you can learn about the uh, mistakes and, um, this is where also uh, I didn't reload my game I didn't play forward I just simply uh, went as I go. But I also have learned of mistakes of others, of mine. I have well, one or two test games in Cosmonaut mode. And this was my first game playing without loans. And I just wanted to demonstrate how to make it work. <laughs> uh, because also the uh, some people, like this bigger, bigger streamer said, ah, without loans, it's, uh, without mods, it's not possible. So I said, okay, challenge accepted. We play on hardest settings, which means this one. Oh, yep, yep. Hardest settings. Uh, if you start the game, there was a cosmonaut button where you dial in the hardest settings. Now it's called realistic button. Um, I changed one, two settings, uh, basically. So I played without the night. So we have a... Um, 
coherent experience watching the video. And I also played without um, uh, in the earliest years, so 1960, which makes it a little bit harder because you don't have all the vehicles you have in the 70s, slower vehicles, uh, smaller vehicles. But I wanted to make it work and make it work for everyone under the, like I said, hardest settings. This is uh, where my other arbitrary rules came from. So um, I said, okay, um, oil is great, but oil is also very not easy uh, because you can also fail with oil. Uh, but you can build a pump jack, nothing else, uh, get the oil tank <laughs> and uh, load directly in the pump jack and uh, drive to the border and you have free money. Nothing wrong with it. But uh, it's a little bit, yeah, let's say, uh, too easy or I just wanted to make the hardest uh, mode work. Uh, same with vanilla. Every mod changes the balance of the game. Some more, some less. If you have a smaller radio station, it will change your balance of the game. Um, you can, you are, or a smaller university, you have uh, faster or lighter access to university, which is a key point. Smaller prison also changes the balance of the game. Uh, other mod modded um, trucks, which I really like. I like, uh, um, I like my mods, but um, these are all changing the balance of the game. And uh, I want to make a comparable run, so no mods. Sorry, hitting the map. Uh, next one was uh, no oil or no natural resources, uh, because I think playing without workers, only extracting oil from the ground is no workers and resources. It's simply resources, <laughs> not the aim of the game. Um, and um, next thing would be um, yeah, to also have uh, develop your population because if you start with only resources it can get boring um, yeah and the other rule was no loans so I wanted to demonstrate how to build a lean city build fast and efficient and uh, have this city um, produce profit from the start from the get-go loans are fine um, but you need to keep in mind how you invest your money, uh, starting with loans. And um, I just wanted to demonstrate this one because also uh, some people would say, oh, it's impos impossible or something, playing without loans and uh, having a working city. And uh, one of the end game was uh, I gave myself uh, 10 years of time to finish this all. So have a crime and justice system, because I think crime and justice is mandatory. If you go over 1000 people population, crime will settle in and you need to deal with it. And the radio station, which is on this uh, scale of population uh, too big, <laughs> not necessary. But uh, if you go forward, it's necessary to keep your develop your population further. Uh, make the whole loyalty thing happen and working yeah so radio station it is also the vanilla radio station is a enormous amount of uh, needs an enormous amount of steel so i need to have an economy to finance all this city buildings and radio station if you start with the starting money one million uh, you can get a little town happening but not all of this so i started here the uh, economic sector which is one of the most profitable i will come to it yeah and this is why i made this challenge and uh, i finished this in under six years so it was five and a half years built the first built the city up and uh, at the same time always developing my economy so i don't get bankrupt and after that, um, building the necessary things like a university for the crime and justice system. Crime and justice needs academics. Um, yeah. And finishing it up. All without touching the loan thing at once. Because I think you need some points to measure the performance and this one is a nice one. So, uh, we are a little bit low on the dollar side. 
I have changed my export so uh, chemicals will be exported to the dollar side, but I think, let's see, yeah, we are suffering of low workers because of the radio station. The radio station is uh, pulling away our workforce greatly. We are very low economic output. Mm. Let me correct this one. Special job for you. So load, unload, and come back. You make very fast mistakes, especially if you're recording and thinking and uh, <laughs> are in stressful situations. So he will work at a, he will load at the central warehouse, which means he will pull out uh, also the uh, some resources stored in the um, fabric factories. Yep. So he will get a full load, <laughs> and he should hurry up, comrade. Um, yeah, this this game was uh, most of the time was on the very thin razor of uh, bankruptcy. One time it was close. So one time it was really close. It was because of the goddamn pump, which decided uh, because of the degrading quality of air that um, it was built closely, but uh, the. The more successful we were here, the pump decided, okay, you don't get clean water. Hurry up, guy. Uh, you don't get clean water and uh, it sparked my industry sector. Yeah, but we will... Where do you go? Do you want to go to Yurifil or what? <laughs> Making here pleasure cruise. Um, yeah. Maybe this will be the first time <laughs> we are going out of... Uh, power, but I don't think so. He will make it. What should go wrong? For example, not working uh, snow plows. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's assume he will make it, and let's talk a little bit about the uh, factors how you can start the cosmonaut mode and uh, not not fail and why I didn't need any time lapses or something except for building the radio uh, why how I managed to move on so fast and what you should take under account so to speak so I made this triangle on the top it's economy on the left side it's construction and on the right side it's workers this is what you need to pay attention if you want to develop your fast in cosmonaut mode. Mm. There are many different ways how to play this game, but if you are on cosmonaut mode, uh, realistic mode, with uh, 1 million ruble and 500k of uh, dollars, you need to balance this uh, to keep moving. If you don't balance uh, one of the three edges of this triangle, you will stuck and you can be stuck for years or maybe tens of years <laughs> uh, not go out mm, and I will come to the details why and it's quite interesting in some ways so the first one and all with all of this connected is uh, another factor which is time so time has an influence of all of these three and is very important also to measure and uh, yeah balance so let's come to the economy if you start on hardest settings on cosmonaut mode you need to have a plan how to make money and how to make money fast and easy um, because everything else is uh, hunking hard so um, the realistic mode does not allow to auto build something so if you forget something uh, you are brown bread um, and if you uh, 
For example, if you build things which you don't need um, or which don't provide very fast access to uh, finances, you can lock yourself up. Like I said, if you so there are different ways to start in the cosmonaut mode. I think uh, close is one of the strongest mm. ways to start without population is the bespoke oil. You also have uh, bauxite, which is very lucrative. And uh, you can go for farming, but farming is more on the edge. You will lose time if you start with farming. For example, uh, Liki demonstrated it and was very interesting. Um, or Liki. He uh, started a farm and uh, planned a second farm and he had to pay around 500,000 rubles to make these two farms work. Without population, without anything. Simply a plain farm export directly to the border, which was genius. So it, he didn't even store the crops. Uh, he simply needs uh, the farms, the vehicles and the uh, distribution office to provide to the border. Two big minuses, which I would say uh, with this start. Firstly, he had to pay 500k. And after that, what now? Because uh, he had no city. Um, and next thing is, the in the farming season, when there's uh, harvesting, everything will be blocked. So uh, your border is uh, not usable in this farm in the harvesting season because all your farming vehicles, all your cover tolls need to transport the crops directly to export. And because you have to pay 500k upfront and cannot make use of it, for example, have a population which develops itself where you can train your imported people like the Westerners. You need to train them. You can not import uh, 500 people and call it a day. Um, you can take, um, you can compensate for the 500k you lost in farming, for example, and uh, take a loan of 500k. So the, these farms generate an income of 100k a year, both of them. And if you take a loan for five years for 500k, you are net zero. So you have your farms running, which is nice. You have, uh, you still, you are back to step one where I start with one million ruble, um, and next five years you are net zero so your income of the farms pay back for the loans and you can develop but you also lose have also lost two years uh, building the farms and uh, like i said time is crucial we will come to this why this is so um it's quite interesting uh, what happened there yep so that's why a farming start is quite hard uh, have built a food factory and then later on the farm it's a totally different thing because you make more profit uh, first doing the food and uh, not uh, you don't need so many vehicles uh, if you connect the food factory directly to your silos which are directly connected to your farm um, you reduce the volume you need to transport to the border even more if you produce alcohol of your uh, grain but uh, this setup here um, has many steps I can integrate. So I start with the closing, which produces, let's say, 50% of profit. So importing fabric, exporting closing, 50% of profit. Then I produce a, have a fabric factory, which increase my profit because the raw materials get cheaper and cheaper. And the money, every step you gain with this, uh, most of the industries, not all, you need to calculate still, um, every step I make more profit. So it's great. And after I got this, uh, at the last stage, I produced my own chemicals. Um, in between, I started my farming business, so I don't need to import, <laughs> which is totally balked now because I have two little workers. Radios, <laughs> my radio station sucked up all my workers. Yeah. So, except uh, everything is still going well yeah should be well let's have a look look see look yes you are happy you are happy yeah so it should should be fine you're working like hell <laughs> all my workers are going here it's a shame yeah um maybe How's your money? Don't want to spend all my money importing again people. 
You go here. Um, yeah. So uh, this is the problem. Uh, radio station is sucking all, all my workers. I need uh, essentially more workers. You see here, I have a population of 2,200. Um, sorry, going off the rails a little bit. But um, what are my workers? 1,300 workers and uh, 415 educated. So around 2,000 workers, a little bit less. And this is more or less how they <laughs> suit themselves. <laughs> so, so no, so no money is a crime. Okay, crime is okay. Um, so uh, we make barely any money and uh, pumping all into radio. This is why radio is a bad idea if you are have less than let's say 5,000 people. I would if I if this was wouldn't be a competitive game. I would uh, use by heating plant and uh, simply build up here a city. It's an underground heating pipe or two. I can pull them out. A city would could exist here in this vicinity. Would be nice. Okay, back to topic. Economy. Um, so with the people starts uh, close is the best. Like I said, uh, in my mind, there is also a start uh, where you can produce first food or alcohol import the crops and later on build a farm and uh, make make your own alcohol from your own grain man it workers um yep yeah. also okay but uh, not so profitable this is the most profitable and the other thing is focus 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 so focus on the uh, Focus on the money side, focus on the economic. Have a plan. Everything you need to build at the, at the start needs to be for your people or your, for your economic side. Don't build anything else you don't need. Don't build no rails, don't build no uh, fuel stations or anything else. Uh, make full use of the uh, free buildings. Um, don't build a construction office. Don't build more construction vehicles you need or pay for them. It's a big expense. Gravel is another thing we can, yeah. So let's go on the subject of construction. So, construction is very important uh, in realistic mode more than before because if you are annoyed before, you can simply press, press the auto buy button and boom, you have an electric system. Um, now, not so much. So you need to plan ahead what you need. Always, always keep in mind electric water heating is mandatory. Um, not for all fabrics, uh, not for all fabrics, not for all uh, industrial buildings, but usually it is. Um, so this one you need to keep in mind and look forward, buy, think forward with your construction. Um, hugging the border is essential because it's again the factor time. If if I build my city here, for example, um, it would be very different because many things uh, need more more uh, driving time and driving time is critical so um, if you build half as fast as i did you s you take more time and um, we will come to this at last what what the influence time can have and what the bad influence time can have yeah um, so get your construction crew get not too much construction crew because uh, the vehicles are a big factor in the initial cost uh, i paid around 200k for my construction crew um, and I haven't got enormous amount of them. A gravel is another thing, so many people like to start with gravel uh, because construction industry needs gravel and you can build your cement factory and asphalt factory, blah blah blah, be self-sufficient. Does not work. Uh, the gravel complex to build them, you spend around 200k for the gravel. and. And to get on the uh, net zero for the gravel, so uh, it pays back itself. Um, <laughs> it's uh, maybe it's three or four years. So in three or four years, I have here running my city, having income, making everything else happen. Gravel needs time to build. You need uh, vehicles to provide the gravel. For example, um, if you have two gravel mines, you need two excavators and four of the big dumpers. One big dumper costs over 20,000 rubles, so uh, 20,000 times 4 is 80,000 rubles, including the excavator, so you 
uh, have spent 100k of vehicles for the gravel industry and you have basically no nothing built so you need to Gravel processing plant. You need, ex uh, you need conveyors, and you need the storage, and you need blah blah blah. You know, you get the point. So it's around 200k. The 200k make you no money. You only spend money. Gravel is cheap at the border. The only thing which is really great if you have your own gravel business um, is that you um, have not so much load on your border, which is also a thing to manage. So the load of the border is, uh, I like it, because it's a constraint, it's a resource to manage. If you have, <laughs> if you fall into old habits, for example, have to be distribution offices running around, um, half full uh, trucks running around, um, you will get into problems because your border is too slow. Or if you try to import or export all your water, also a problem. And that's why uh, you need to adapt and uh, or you can uh, blame the border for it uh, self what what I blame this border for is eating my vehicles bastard okay but this one is fixed hopefully um, next thing is we are at the construction yeah one thing changed uh, which is the use of cranes so smallest road crane is perfectly enough if you uh, transport 20 people to the working site and have a smaller sword crane it will speed up all your workers by a factor of 5.5 we shoot on it to death i think um, you can watch my videos about crane and construction sites i will next run i would uh, change the crews so i have three mi mini buses uh, and one road crane oh we have a nice little fire why not um yeah and fire <laughs> good topic so uh, fires in my experience start if you have population or if you have exports if you have no population and no exports there are no fires in the initial stage and uh, in my game it proved as soon as i invited people my school basically burned down and after that next uh, <laughs> next uh, i think this or this housing block starts to burn because why not yeah so fires, be aware of them, but uh, I think if you start the construction, uh, the game gives you a grace period until you have the first uh, industrial activity or the first population on site. Yeah. Okay. I have chosen uh, this this point for the fire station because maybe I thought, okay, I can future-proof myself. Um, the fire station is here, so it has a more radius. It has the radius of here, and uh, if I want to build another city here, I also would have radio station coverage, the same with the heating plant. So I could connect uh, some heating pipes here, underground pipes have 1,000 meters, and uh, have a bigger city, a normal city, so to speak, with big shopping center and uh, some some buildings. Which will profit greatly because I have the whole crime and justice system implemented. So I only need to, at the next city, I only need the police, for example, and the secret police, um, and not the other shebang. Yeah, some something scale, and this makes the ha start even harder because I have many things which would scale in a big uh, republic. For example, I have a republic with 40k people, and one prison is enough. But here I need to prison anyway, because uh, where do we lock them up if we find them? It's stupid. Okay. Um, so the last thing in, in this pyramid. Happiness is going down. I think because of the uh, heating situation. Heating situation? Everything else is here, comrades. So don't be upset. Um, last thing is the population so if you another factor a big factor which needs to be balanced so if you have too little construction if you have to start too much construction sites and you have too little construction crew uh, you don't finish the most important buildings uh, you can lock yourself up <laughs> again and be annoyed because nothing moves on um, if you take a look at my first first uh, episodes I start. I was very deliberate, so I started uh, three or five buildings at the ground stage and wait until everything was delivered. Then delivered the people and uh, prioritize the buildings to make the town work. So everything here in the center is to make it work. And then you need uh, two 
to housing blocks and you can start invite people and train the people um, because on hardest money settings uh, you have no big choice the soviets are quite as expensive mm. so if you invite uh, 10 soviets it's now 5000 which is not which is the same price as the uh, starting one or you can invite your uh, experts also uh, for 5000 but you have less working force and the um, westerners like the cubans or vietnamese or i don't know where they come from um, are super <laughs> super cheap uh, they they rose in price but they're still super cheap and uh, usually your rubles are very valuable and your dollars uh, you need to spend somewhere in it's hard to find a place to spend also that's why i'm here at the corner of the to the west because uh, Western Steel helped us greatly to build up the city. Mm. So population. Uh, you invite a basic force of population. I started with uh, pulling out some people from the border to make my town work and stable. Invited a basic force of population, some Soviet experts, the rest of them Westerners. Need to educate them, teach them how to read and write in our Soviet language. Um, after a few months they are ready but they are also quite crappy so they came out with a bad health and uh, bad happiness and bad loyalty oh look at this we have loyalty of 60% here um, yeah <laughs> okay um, so radio is starting to work we can maybe make it a little bit higher what is the average loyalty here? Over 55%, yeah. So let's uh, let's adjust it to the loyalty. And you see, we started at a loyalty gain of 2%, now we have uh, 5%, because loyalty has a great influence of these numbers here above. Everywhere where you have some loyalty dials on, the, your, um, on your uh, buildings, the loyalty of your workers has a great influence so if i'm now i'm ready so to speak uh, and i set this one up like this so let's take a look at the numbers anti-church yes anti-alcohol yes propaganda still yes a little bit happiness why not anti-church is okay yeah so this is where I want to come out. I want to propagandize our people a little bit. I want to make them a little bit happy. I want to give the... Uh, oh, it's the wrong way with alcohol. <laughs> they should consume less, not more. If you start, if you want to uh, reduce the alcohol thing, you see the church anti-church propaganda goes down. So if you say alcohol is bad, people want to go to pray. <laughs> I don't know what's happening there, but uh, that's that's how it is. Um, alcohol is not a big problem. It was before, um, but with loyalty, they think rebalance the alcohol. So even though I have uh, quite a big, big alcohol consumption rates, let's take a look of our alcoholism, so to speak. It's it's huge, uh, but I have an average lifespan of um, you see here, 82 years, which is uh, nearly perfect. Okay, so uh, development of the population. I and I started. If you have population on sites, you can also uh, have your constructions faster because they don't need buses. They're always on site. You can pump in people to the working places. Oh, it's my money. Not good. Yeah, still the radio is sucking up everyone and his mother. So. Population, uh, develop your population at the same time, look at the crime sector, because crime is also developing, like I said, over a thousand people and Westerners are a little bit more criminal. If you uh, cross the line with a thousand people, you need to do something and you need to get at some point to your academic side. So because we now have a higher spread of loyalty in our, uh, in our people, I can filter out the academics. Because now many people are waiting, many children are waiting, because I educate no one, basically. And if I filter out the academics, so have something like elite Soviets, um, I can raise the bar, so I educate always the same group, because pe uh, children don't lose their loyalty, uh, they only gain loyalty. So 60% is a little bit too high, you see. Let's go for 55%. All population development. 
No one wants to come? Here's one. Hey, Snowflake. Are you really? Yeah, you're really. Good. So now I am in a comfortable pos uh, position that I can say, okay, I want some workers here. I also want them to have 45% uh, loyalty. Yep. And I educate these people who are very high on loyalty because they are uh, avid radio listeners. <laughs> so loyalty is passed through uh, to radio and to the um, party. I can reduce this also. Because now I can have a steady, uh, steady income of educated people. And you see, I'm always educated a group of highly loyal people, which result in highly loyal teachers and highly loyal teachers not here. Uh, um, make me highly loyal children again, which is good because the workers can only be taught loyalty. Um, workers uh, have less radios, and uh, you see, I have uh, half of the population has a radio. Let's see. Um, I have the 1,000 workers, 70% of the population has radio, mostly the academics. Uh, yeah. So the rest of the loyalty is uh, come by passive loyalty or loyalty in the system, but the average loyalty is uh, good. So now we have an average loyalty of 58%. Let's see where we land, but I'm satisfied. Yeah. The most important thing is if you have a radio, you need a good staffed radio and a productive population radio. So you can play with the numbers and end up something like this. Also, um, our prison quality of our prison should rise because of this. If you, yeah, you see, now we're educating our people, uh, making our prisoners more loyal if it's good staffed, um, which only, you can only do if you have a good amount of uh, loyal staff. Like I said, if there are some diets here, uh, the outcome of the building will profit. Everywhere you have diets, the loyalty system has some influence. Okay. So this is the development of the population you see at the moment happening and uh, you profit from the radio station because um, the higher the higher the loyalty it also has influence of the productivity combined with happiness and uh, the documentation the internal documentation says that the people are less uh, less reactive on bad uh, circumstances so if there's no food or something more loyal people are going not so fast down which is also nice yeah so, um, okay, this one is under control. So let's get to the last factor, which is quite interesting. It's time and time is uh, playing against us. So there are two factors which are big inflation and the uh, raising cost of everything you import massively. Also exporting lowers the cost. Um, and one of the corporates is steel. Uh, steel really is interesting. Um, let's go here. Let's go uh, here. Oh, oh, here prices. And let's go for all. I think steel was on here. Steel. And steel now is what? Steel now is at 700 rubles. And look at the steel price. It's a, it's, it's crazy. Steel, steel goes up because I'm constantly importing and building something. And uh, at the starting point, I had a steel price of uh, 370, 380 rubles. And now I'm at double the cost of steel. So if I save my money and wait for I don't know what, if I don't spend my money at the start, if I start with more money, for example, with 3 million, um, your money will be worth half of it now than it was at the start so if you're building things um, also came back to construction and uh, economics if you're building things without focus you're building things too big because uh, future proof future proof for the first city is totally nonsense uh, build the least amount you need but the most that you make your people happy and uh, get off the ground so because of the steel price doubled my money is worth half of it which is <laughs> big um, and which also means, okay, it's time maybe for a steel mill. Um, talked about last time, steel mill is not great for start, but for later game, if you have a stable economy, uh, steel mill is very nice because your building, your construction costs went nearly to zero. Um, 
but you need to have uh, two mines, an uh, iron mine and a coal mine. Importing the raw resources makes absolutely no sense. You can uh, run the uh, numbers. Maybe now it makes sense because <laughs> see the situation. But um, at the start it makes no sense. Um, so you need the two mines, you need the processing, you need the infrastructure, you need maybe a rail network with, with your steel, but you can also bootstrap your rail network with your steel mill. Um, and you need around uh, per mine 200 people, um, times two is 400 people for the steel mill, again 500 people, so around 1000 workers you need. And 1000 workers times two shifts are 3000 workers, which is more than my whole population. I have uh, around, what did we say, 1500, 1600 workers. So a steel mill would be totally unpractical at my current stage. A population development, if you have a healthy population, your population will rise 20% every year. I had to dip in population because on the in initial imports, uh, the people live, you see here. <laughs> this is a normal population rise. This dip comes from the import of the people. So, so people live around four years in game. And uh, if I import them, they are around 20 to 30 years old, some 40. And uh, Westerners are not so um, not so good in health anyway. So here's the dip where all the people died who are imported at the start, and it uh, levels out here, and the population should grow stable, stable twenty percent year over year. So that means by the end of next year, I will have two thousand five hundred at the end of next year, and it goes fast because twenty percent of twenty percent of twenty percent adds up. Um, after two years, I have maybe 3,000 people, and then uh, the gain will be faster and faster. So I like to have initial import and uh, develop my population out of my population. 20% is good and healthy. If you don't, uh, if you, <laughs> if you don't poison your population, to have them on a good mood. So yeah, 82 years. If you have uh, around 75 years, you are at a zero growth, and if you're under 70 years, you are population loss territory more or less yeah one thing is the orphanages but the orphanages is all another topic i don't want to open this one so this is why time is crucial another factor which why time is crucial is the uh, vehicles because you can say, say okay steel uh, whatever then is you imported too much steel suit yourself um the cover toll costs now here eleven thousand ruble and at the start of the game i looked it up it was uh, 6,600 ruble. The inflation of the uh, the inflation of the vehicle cost is 10% per year. <laughs> I've calculated it. So every year your vehicle gets 10% more costly. And uh, if you wait five years, do nothing. You can only buy half of your fleet of vehicles because everything was is so much more uh, costly, nearly double the price. So this is why time is crucial. And if you wait too long, if you don't uh, make your money work for you, uh, either by developing population or by developing an industrial se uh, sector, you're out of luck. And uh, this is why some people maybe uh, suffer or are slow in the cosmonaut mode. They may even make it, but if you don't focus on a strong export, uh, inflation will kill you. Simple as that. Or inflation will provide you a very long and suffering death. Um, experienced people will dig out of themselves of, out of the hole. I'm totally not afraid of inflation because I have a strong export sector. At the moment not, <laughs> because my radio eat all my people. But uh, my my industry will, can generate 1 million, uh, 1 million ruble a year. If it runs on good gears. Yeah. Um, and let's take a look at the productivity because I said, okay, productivity is based on loyalty. So here's the uh, biggest amount of academics and I said biggest amount of radio listeners. So let's pick one. Academic has a radio, nice. Um, so he listens to our good program here, nearly 70% of loyalty and uh, 88% of happiness and he has a productivity of here we go 115% so 25% better you gain 25% of population basically for free which is huge so one of the things which 
for example, is huge is more productivity, more happiness. We can deal with more people here in the shopping center. If we have loyal and happy people, we can deal with more people. If we have loyal and not so happy people, we can deal with less people, which is also uh, a trap. Because if you have something where your happiness dips, uh, your shopping center will collapse and it's very thin road to uh, your whole town will collapse. You see here, it's uh, on the edge. Yeah. Quite, quite stressful here. <laughs> and let's look, let's not look at that. Um, what is our radio doing? I think the numbers are now stabilized. Um, yeah, we make them happy. We make them less alcoholic, which is great because we spend less money on uh, alcohol. Maybe a little bit more healthy people, but the health is not so dramatic as before. Before I always, before loyalty, I played without uh, pubs because it has only negative effects. Now it's great. Yeah. Okay, so I think this is enough for one conclusion episode. I take, talked may, way longer than I wanted to. I wanted to get into some numbers. Please uh, look up old episodes where the numbers are presented. Uh, so we talked about loyalty. I think uh, Frankie Berlin with who digged up great numbers of loyalty. So loyalty gain is basically with radio. Uh, you gain around if I have the numbers right and but go back and look at the commentaries uh, with radio you, go, you get around 75% tops loyalty with uh, TV station you get around 80 or 85% maybe 100% but on hardest settings the loyalty gain is, is slower than on or lower hardest population than on not so hard settings and uh, the car also provides some additional loyalty, so if you want to super optimize this one house over, yeah, you see, we could use a little bit more people, but we are all educating always the same people, so you make super loyal new Soviets here, which pro uh, provides loyalty for the rest of the population. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so cars also provide some additional loyalty. If you want to super optimize it, you let your uh, teachers drive with a car. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and that's it. So, like I said before, I had great fun doing this playthrough, doing something which many would think it's uh, very hard or impossible. And uh, thank you again for joining me. Uh, some some topics I left out here, which I wanted to speak about. But, uh, time. <laughs> I think you heard enough my gobbledygook um yeah and if you're still here and like my content uh, please leave a like there it uh, motivates me to put out more content and always nice feedback and uh, you have something additional to say just comment and uh, i'm happy to read it and uh, see if we can improve together even more <laughs> yeah. so have a great one bye comrades